Welcome to part two of an awesome motorcycle edit. Hey guys, welcome to Flirn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Welcome back. This is part two, numero dos of our motorcycle edit. If you didn't see part one, well, I really suggest doing so. Uh, we'll link to it right down below so you don't have to do any work on that front. This is part two. We're going to be finishing this image off. First part took about 20 minutes. I'm guessing this is going to be about 20 minutes as well. Some really, really cool stuff. We're gonna, let's just get into it because there's so much to do. First thing I want to do, we're going to add some rain to this image and uh, you're going to absolutely love this. So we're going to create a new layer. And what I first want to do, we're going to grab our brush tool. So B for the brush tool and we're going to go to window and then down here to brush. So we're going to create a brush that is rain, which is really cool. Let's just use white as our color. So you can see as I paint around with white right now, it just looks like that. It just looks like, okay, cool. That's just what normal brush looks like, right? All right, so we're going to change that basically. The first thing I want to do is bring up our spacing. So I want these to be all individual like little dots. So now you can see with our spacing turned up, let's bring it right about there. It's just dots when I'm painting around, right? with a nice hard edge brush. So it looks like that if these things are round. That's what your brush does. Closer together and it looks like that. So just, we're just spacing these apart a little bit wider. Okay, now with that spaced apart, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change the, uh, here with the size, the roundness. So I'm gonna click here and bring it in to, or you just type here about 2%. Okay, so now we're just gonna be painting with something that looks like that, kinda cool. We're going to change our angle here to 90 and that's going to get straight up and down and let's just bring our spacing apart even more. All right, so now we're painting with something that looks like that. You can see we're already get, getting a lot closer to rain. A couple things missing though. What we do want to do, I'm going to turn shape dynamics on. We're going to turn our size jitter up and I'm going to turn my minimum diameter to, to, to zero. And that's basically just going to give us some of these are going to be larger and some of these are going to be smaller. If you feel like you're you could increase your roundness a little bit. You can totally do that too. And your hardness, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. There we go. That's looking much better. So you kind of use this guy as like a test palette. Now the next thing I want to click on is scattering. So I do want these things to scatter around and that's what's going to make it really look like rain. It's just going to kind of randomly put them everywhere. I would suggest let's do both axes and then just puts this rain kind of everywhere you want. So on a normal picture, let's just close out the brush tab right quick. On a normal picture, rain can fall straight down and that would look pretty cool. In this image, I don't think the rain should be falling straight down because we've got a motorcycle and he's kind of like coming in towards the camera. We've got some perspective and uh, there's probably like a, a, a bit of motion in there that needs to happen. There's not a lot of motion blur in the image, but there is motion. So motion blur would cause a rain drop to go sideways, but if you froze the motion, the rain would look a little bit more like um, well, a little bit more round than this actually. So let's go back to window. We'll go down to brush and I'll just bring my roundness up a little bit. All right, because it should look a little bit more round and we'll just make it a little bit more, a little bit smaller. And I'm going to put it at an angle. So what we're going to do is instead of an angle being 90, let's just put it at an angle, something like 50 degrees. Okay, now if you like your brush that you just created, man, I love this brush. Yeah, best day of my life. Uh, you can save it. All you have to do is go right here to these menu items and go to new brush preset and we'll just call this rain. Hit OK and now you've got a cool rain brush so you can use it whenever you want. Okay, now rain, just like in part one where we did the headlight in three different sections, rain you want to do this in many different layers. So we're going to go ahead and create a group here. We're going to double click and call this rain. The reason you want to do this in many different layers is because it's, it's just, it's, you want a lot of variation. For instance, We've got rain, let's say this is the rain that's close to the camera. It's gonna be, it's gonna be huge. But maybe this stuff that is supposed to be close to the camera shouldn't be that visible. So let's just lower down the opacity a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good there. And now we need to make rain that's far away because rain doesn't only come to the camera, right? So we need to make rain back here that's far away. And that's gonna be like in, in the background. And wherever we have, uh, light sources, that's going to catch more rain. So it's not like there's no rain here, but you have a light source right here that's going to actually catch the rain. And that's why you can see rain, uh, because it just reflects off the light that you see. So I'm going to do that, and you know, that looks pretty good, some rain back there. Maybe you want to lower the opacity, 
if you want to put a, a layer mask on that or blur it or whatever you want to do. So I always suggest doing rain in, in multiple layers. Um, here I'm going to make more rain visible where this headlight is. There we go. All right, now we'll just lower that opacity until something we like. And if you want to just come through and grab your eraser tool, you can totally, totally just erase some of this stuff away. It's, don't feel like anything you do needs to be permanent in Photoshop ever, pretty much. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's get some more rain going on. Maybe that's a little bit too big. And then we'll just lower this opacity to like 10% or something like that. So it's just, you kind of see it. And then you've got all these different layers and you can just kind of like turn them off and on, decide whether you like them or not and uh, where you want to use them. So like this, this layer is like, yeah, I kind of like that, but I don't like it in some places. So I'll grab my eraser tool and just erase it away from where I don't want it to be visible. So you can just do this kind of over and over again. Just turn these layers off and on and kind of just erase it or layer mask or whatever, whatever you want to do. And that's just going to help you, there we go, make it a little bit more visible. That is our rain. And you can really just do whatever you want here. Let's just do one more layer and um, so maybe some smaller, smaller bits of rain here. There we go, kind of around, around that headlight. And then I think I like this small rain, so I'm just gonna include more of it. I'm just, I'm just moving my cursor all around. All right. There we go, that looks pretty good. So we can zoom in and kind of see like, oh cool, all the little, all the little raindrops. All right, so we got some rain going on and uh, we can just turn that layer off and on now. And you can tweak this as much as you want as well. One thing I'm gonna do, this will be kind of cool. I'm gonna duplicate this rain group. So I'm gonna hit Command J on that group, which is just gonna duplicate it. Let's hit Command J again. I want this to be really visible. Now I'm gonna shift click those two layers and I'm gonna hit Command E. So I just duplicated the entire group twice and then I merge those together. So now on my own group, I've got this. It's just what, what was the rain here, and it's just a brighter, more intense version of it. So what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a layer mask on this, a black layer mask. So hold Alt or Option, put a layer mask on there, and then you can paint with a normal paintbrush white where you want it to be like super intense, right? Because this layer is just gonna, in, it's gonna increase the intensity wherever you paint it, paint it back visible. So maybe here by the light source and you know, here up where the head beam of our, of our little thing is there. So we're just kind of creating a couple points of intensity there, which are just going to kind of sell the overall effect a little bit more. There we go. And then this gets back into our rain group. All right, so we have some rain and uh, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty sick, guys. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna bring some highlights into our biker and then we're gonna finish this image off with some curves. So we're gonna create a new layer. Let's go ahead and group that with itself by command G and I'm gonna call this highlights. This is a really cool technique for this. So what we wanna do, we're gonna create the, on this layer, we're just gonna paint with a regular white paintbrush here and I wanna paint pretty much right directly over top of the cool looking highlights on our biker, all right. This actually should be below the rain group, to be honest. So the reason is I wanna bring out some really interesting highlights with our biker, um, but I don't need to bring out the, the rain as well. So I'm gonna put this below our rain group and I'm gonna turn our rain group off temporarily. There we go. And let's just paint this in the, there as well. So we're just painting white right now over top of our biker. It doesn't really matter where you do this, but right now just over top of our biker. What I want to do is make sure these highlights are just visible where our biker is and where the highlights are. So it's actually a lot easier than you think. You just double click right here on the layer 17 or whatever layer you have and make this not visible where the underlying layer is darker. So hold Alt or Option and then bring this in from the left to the right. Now we're going to bring that one in as well. There we go. To kind of decide how much this should be visible there in the darks and how much we want visible there in the lights as well. Okay, so we're gonna hit okay. So we can see turning this off and on, it really does a great job of kind of like bringing out just the highlights. There we go, very cool. Now you can control how much you want it to be visible by lowering the opacity a little bit. And then I'm just gonna make sure that it's not visible there on our background. So what we did is just created a layer mask. There we go. And now I'm just painting black with 
just a normal brush here on my image. There we go. Just where the background is, because I want him to, the reason why we're doing this is so it, he can stand off of the background. There we are. Cool, he's standing off the background and those, he really does kind of like pop off just a little bit more. All right, very nice. So let's turn our rain back on, looking pretty good. And the next thing I want to do, let's go ahead and put maybe just like a little bit of fog. We're going to put a little bit of fog in this image. All right, so we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to just put this in our rain group. We'll double click and call this rain plus fog. There we go. So let's create a new layer. And uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to just hit shift, delete, and then we're going to put 50% gray. There we go. And I'm going to go to, now to filter. We're going to go to render and I'm going to go to clouds. So filter, render, and then clouds. Or you can go to filter, render, and then you can go down to difference clouds, which is just like a little bit more intense. So let's try the difference clouds. Now to get rid of the black on this layer, all I have to do is change it from normal down here to screen, and it's going to completely get rid of it. Maybe I don't like difference clouds. Maybe that's not going to work for this. Let's go to filter, render, and then regular clouds again. Yeah, I think that's going to work well. So that looks pretty good, but it's way like it's too visible. So I'm going to hit Command L, which is going to bring up our levels where we can actually adjust like the white and black levels on this fog. There we go. And it's just going to allow me to put a little bit more black in there, which now makes the fog a little bit less dense. And what we're going to do now is just kind of place it where we want to. And we're, in the same way we did the rain, we're going to do it on multiple layers. But I'm going to hold Alt or Option and put a black layer mask on that. And then I'm going to paint white on my layer mask. There we go. Just where I want this actual, where I want the fog to show up. A little bit of fog, you know, here in the headlights for sure. We want this to be able to see that. A little bit of fog there as well. All right, and some fog behind him being captured by the captured by the sun. Maybe not so much right here. There we go. That's looking cool. Now we're just going to duplicate duplicate duplicate. <laughs> We're going to duplicate all day long, duplicate the layer, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, which is going to give us like maybe what would look like smoke or something like that behind the wheel. All right, there we go. And let's just transform that. And then you can just use your layer mask on this layer to define where you want it to be visible and not as well. So same kind of thing. We're going to do it again. I'm going to hit Command J, duplicate that layer, duplicate. I think I'm kind of proud of that duplicate. That's... Not a lot of people can make up words like that on the spot. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one. All right, let's do it one more time. I'm going to hit Command-J, and this time I'm going to make it a lot larger. And then we'll just have like, a, like a, an area of fog that's just a little bit closer to the camera there. All right, we'll lower it down in the opacity, and I'm going to paint black on our layer mask right here. And we'll lower that, that as well. OK, so now we've got rain and fog. You could just call this atmospheric particles if you wanted to. There we go. Very, very cool. I think this is a little bit too light right there on the bottom left. Sometimes I'll turn my layers off and on rapidly and that'll just help me to see like if I like if I don't like something about it. So you can just turn this eyeball off and on and then you can see is it better before or after and it, could there be anywhere where you think maybe could be like a little bit less visible just like right there. Okay, perfect. Now, we still got our color group above everything else. Look at it. Can you see now how it was important we did our color group first? Because this image really doesn't look very good right now. But here, with that color turned on, we're able to get a lot more accurate of a picture. So next thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to our curves. I'm going to click and just drag this down just a bit. And then we're going to create a lasso tool. I'm just going to make what looks like a kind of a random selection here. It really doesn't matter. And um, I'm going to hit Command I on that layer mask, and this is going to be where like the lighter, the lighter part of the image is. Obviously, the headlights and stuff like that should be should be light. Let's fill that with white as well. So now this is just going to get like a little bit of a blur. Maybe we'll make it a little bit more random with some of that stuff. There we go. Let's fill that with white as well. So that's what it looks like. I know it's pretty random, but light is kind of like a little bit more random. Sometimes if you just do like round shapes and then give those blurs. It can look a little bit like forced. All right, let's make that a little bit lighter as well. There we go. So I'm following where the light area is throughout this image. So I'm going to hit 
Uh, the blur, we're going to go to filter. You can do it here, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And just kind of increase your blur until it looks a little bit more natural. So some of these areas are darker, like on the top and the bottom there. But you can see what my blur looks like. It's a bit more of a random blur than just a, a color blur. Yeah, I definitely like that. Let's do the same thing with our lights. I'm going to go to Curves again. We're going to make things a little bit lighter. There we go. I'm going to hit Command-I, and then we're just going to make something like this. <laughs> it's so technical, I know. And then we're going, to, we're going to go over our headlight as well here. Cool. Hit Command-I on those, and then that's going to be the lighter areas. And then you can do a Gaussian blur on those as well. And you could do a less or a more, depending on depending on the shape and how much blur you want there. All right, very cool. So let's just do uh, Command-G. This is, in a way, it's kind of like a vignette. We'll just lower the opacity maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit like a vignette. All right, guys, and if you do want to do any more coloring on the very top of it, you could totally do that. Let's grab like a levels adjustment layer. Maybe go to our blue channel. I'm going to pull up the blues a little bit and then pull in the yellows up towards the top just a little bit more. And let's do that with our greens as well. Just for a little bit more coloring there on the top. You can see how instead of going to black here, it's going to like a, a nice teal color as well. So that is it. Let's look at our original image. You can hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask. Or click on the eyeball here. So this is our before and our after. Not too hard, guys. You're probably able to follow along with just about everything. But if not, you can always watch these videos again and again and again because they're on the internet. And all you have to do is hit play. That's the end. Two-part episode making this image totally awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I want to see your images down below. Be sure to leave them in a comment. And I will look at them and I will smile. <laughs> I'll learn you guys later. The next thing we're going to do is... I don't remember what I was going to do next. Asa, you might have to cut this part out because I don't remember what I was going to do. For more information on this episode, go to flern.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.